Good morning and welcome to Big Mouth. First of all, before I start talking about Smallville, first of all, I promise no more singing, at least not for today, right? And I want to thank all 23 subscribers. I've only been going for um, over a week. Now, 23 subscribers isn't a great deal, but for me, it means so much. And every one of those subscribers mean a hell of a lot to me. So make sure you click the bell so you don't miss anything if you're interested. And if you can be bothered, let people know what I'm doing on here. Talking about different things, football, movies, TV. And today, I want to talk about Smallville. Smallville, I mean, I've already done a, a Smallville video, but I just saw some clips this morning and it made me all emotional. Smallville came at a time when Buffy had finished, X-Files was coming to the end, and the highest rated shows were Milrose Place, 90210, and Knott's Landing. So Smallville came at that new era for TV, quickly followed by 24, Alias, Lost, Prison Break, and etc. Now all those great shows have gone now, but it was a golden age of TV and I thought it would have lasted a hell of a lot longer, but it hasn't. When I look at Smallville and I see the amazing character dynamics, which were just as awesome and great as the superhero action. When Smallville first came, I wasn't very excited, but that quickly changed. It was such a clever show and our Miles, the show creators, were very clever into making the first season look like a Dawson's, Dawson's Creek kind of show, but it wasn't really. This was the character-driven story of how Clark Kent becomes Superman. Our Miles called it The Trials of Lex and Clark. The Trials of Lex Luthor and Clark Kent. It was such an amazing show, and the characters leaped off the page. You see, this is the key thing with a TV series, a film, a book, if your characters are interesting and engaging, people are going to be interested. They made Clark Kent very relatable, very relatable. And, and I think this is what I've been talking about when I've talked about making a Superman film and making Clark and Superman relatable. Smallville did it. Tom Welling was a great choice because he wasn't the kind of lad who was going to go out and uh, publicly start taking drugs and clubbing. If he did do that kind of thing, it would have been in the back burner. So there was no dirt on this guy. He was uh, he just wanted to work, and he did, and he was fantastic. And then you have someone like Rosenbaum, Michael Rosenbaum as Lex. I mean, I remember watching Commencement this morning and um, just thinking, wasn't it amazing that we had Lex Luthor in every episode of Smallville from season one to season seven without a break? That was amazing. And no other super hit Superman TV show has done that. When I look at Lois and Clark, and people say to me, well, Lois and Clark is a better show because he wore the costume. Are, are you kidding me? Tom Welling's young Clark Kent was more Superman without the suit than, than Dean Cain's version was with the suit. And in fact, Dean Cain wasn't a particularly good actor, and he really was holding on to Terry Hatcher's coattails. And Terry was the only reason that show was watchable or interesting at all. And even as a mad Superman fan, I quickly dropped Lois and Clark. It wasn't interesting. But Smallville was all things to all people. It was funny. It was serious. It was dark. It was light. It was fantastic. And what I loved about Smallville, it earned the right to bring in the other DC characters that it did. So, like, season one, season two was really purely the story of Clark Kent and his relationship with Lex and his parents, and even Lionel Luthor, Lana, Chloe. And then we started bringing in a few DC characters like Perry White. That episode Perry was fantastic. And, and then season four, we saw The Flash, who they couldn't call The Flash, and that was great as well. And then as we went on in the seasons, they brought more. And then ultimately, we had Absolute Justice. But by the time we had Absolute Justice, which was an hour and a half event, um, they had earned it through the early seasons, mainly focusing on Clark and his friends. And it was just such a clever show. And it went beyond being a pre-Superman story. But it became the Bible of Superman in a lot of ways. Not replacing the comics, but in a way coming in and saying, we, we know that Superman the movie and Reed was very iconic. And then that special moment when I hear Christopher Reeve is going to... 
um, guest star in Smallville, and I'm thinking, oh, he's just going to do a, you know, he's just going to do a, a Stan Lee and just uh, will pass because obviously the man was disabled. Very tragic what happened. Um, I cried the day I heard it happened to him. And I, I cried like a baby the day I heard he, he died. Christopher Reeve was very important to me, and I'm going to do a video about that. But instead of that, Christopher Reeve, a man who needed a ventilator to breathe, did a speaking part, and he played a very important role in the evolution of Clark Kent on Smallville. Hello, Clark. I've been expecting you. That beautiful um, scene in the observatory. I mean, it was so emotional. I'm just, I'm getting emotional now. It was beautiful. Do you know how many times I watched Rosetta? Again and again and again. And then they did a special kind of after show about it. And it was brilliant. Christopher Reeve was an amazing man. But he'd already watched Smallville. He approved of it. He didn't like Lois and Clark. Um, it didn't help that Dean Cain said he was a better version of Clark Kent than Chris was, which was absolutely despicable. Um, but, it, yeah, so he was never going to cameo on that. But Smallville, he liked the special effects, the storytelling. Smallville, Smallville had so many, you know, so many great things about it. It had someone like Schneider playing John Jonathan Kent. Schneider, when you hear him being interviewed, is so passionate. He truly believed in that character. He didn't like the sci-fi elements of the show, which I disagree with him about, because I think that was that's what I'm talking about. Smallville was all things to all people. That's why it worked. That's why it went for a decade. And if it went for another decade, by the way, even though he would never have become Superman, he'd still be Clark Kent with his powers, saving people. I personally wouldn't have cared, even though I love Superman and I want to see him in the cape. It was so good, so beautiful, and there's so many memories. I remember trying to edit videos together, the best moments of Smallville. And I used to I, I used to say to my girlfriend at the time, you know what, I don't know what to leave out. I felt bad leaving stuff out. There were so many great moments that my trailers ended up like being at 50 minutes, which was ridiculous. But in, And I was making up these trailers on, I was like recording them on DV, blank DVDs. They were really for me. They weren't really to put on YouTube or anything. But back then, I wasn't on the internet. I had no one to talk about Smallville with. My friends weren't interested, even though I tried to force feed them it. So uh, it was kind of, I was so on my own. And then when I come onto Facebook, and I mean, I moved to Cyprus the first time um, during season nine of Smallville. Then I started going on Facebook and talking to people, you know, you know, listening to the blogs. And um, it was a beautiful time. You just wanted it to last forever. And when I hear Arrowverse fans saying that Arrowverse, Supergirl, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, um, Arrow, The Flash are better than Smallville, I'm sorry. Yes, The Flash and Arrow had a fabulous two seasons, but still, they didn't have what Smallville had. As I keep on saying, something for everyone. It was fantastic. They were telling a pre-Superman story, and it worked. And so many shows fed off of, fed off of that, what Our Miles did. Because of that, it, it, Smallville lit the blue touch paper on what Al Miles did was amazing. I was obsessed. I was obsessed. All I talked about was Smallville. You know, I'm sure I'm going to rewatch it again soon, but then I've got to rewatch Doctor Who because end of August, that's coming back. Don't go. Too many things, too many things. But basically, for me, there is no superhero show that had the consistency of Smallville. And let me explain to you. Yes, Daredevil had a fabulous first season, but then it had a very average second season. When I look at the other Netflix Marvel shows, very inconsistent. I've, I've given up on them. I can't be bothered. And it's not because I'm more of a DC fan than Marvel, which I am. I, I would have kept on watching them, but I just got disinterested because nothing was grabbing me anymore. With Smallville, this was about, this was a coming of age story. We saw a young man grow up on our screens, not just via Tom Welling, the actor, and all the others as well, but the actual character of Clark. You slowly saw him becoming Superman. I loved how he wore the red jacket and the blue t-shirt. Beautiful again, genius. Smallville is a show that I could talk about forever. I haven't even touched on the things I love the most. John Glover as Lionel Luther. Tell me, Arrowverse, have you got uh, a, a mixed, convoluted character like that. No. Lionel Luther was great. Smallville was great. 